Hi, and welcome to the section of the physics tutor. Uh, in this section, we're going to use our knowledge of current, current density that we learned about in the last section and begin to apply it. So the big thing to remember here is just make sure you really understand the concepts and the units. Units, units, units. And physics, chemistry, and all these courses can really save you. So make sure you understand the units, and we'll see why here in just a minute. First problem says there's a current of 5 amps in a wire for 4 minutes. Okay, and the first part says how many coulombs pass through a cross section of that wire? And part B says how many electrons pass through a cross section of that wire? So again, this is really an exercise of really making sure you understand truly what the units really are. And the most important thing is to draw a picture, so let's begin with that. So we have a wire, and I'm going to represent my wire as a really high-tech rectangle like this. So there's a wire, circular of course, so it has a cross-sectional area. The, um, the current in this wire, I'm going to represent it with I is equal to 5 amps. That's what we say. And somewhere out here, I'm just going to put it over here, we do this for 4 minutes. So literally, we turn the switch on, we have 5 amps of current flowing through, we let it go for 4 minutes, and then we shut it off. So during the whole time that the 4 minutes was elapsing, we were shoving tons and tons of electrons and letting them propagate through the circuit. That's what the current's doing, it's traveling through the circuit. We want to find out, for part A, how many coulombs pass through a cross-section of that wire. Well, the first thing you really have to remember is that an ampere is a coulomb per second. That is the definition of an ampere. So an ampere is equal to a coulomb per second. So that's your first real clue right there. So that means that 5 amps is really 5 coulombs per second. Second, So I'm, what I'm going to end up doing is setting up a unit conversion here. 5 coulombs per second. That's sort of the first trick. They're not going to tell you that in a, in a problem. They're not going to tell you, hey, make sure you know it's coulomb per second. That's for you to know that that's what an ampere is. And when we say coulomb per second, that means every single second that elapses, 5 more coulombs of current or of uh, electric charge flow past whatever arbitrary cross-section I choose to look at. All right? So what do we need to do next? Uh, we want to find out how many coulombs... Uh, pass through a cross section of that wire, right? But what we really need to do is basically multiply. Now that we know how many coulombs per unit time, we want to multiply by the time. And that's going to give us the number of coulombs that actually flowed through over four minutes. So what we need to do is realize that uh, what we have here is 60 seconds is one minute. And the length of time that we have was actually four minutes. Now, why do we set it up this way? Because the minutes cancels with this minute here. The seconds cancel with the second. So the only unit left here is coulombs. So when we set that up, 5 times 60 divided by 1, div multiply by 4, we're going to get 1,200. 1,200 coulombs pass. So what this means is that if I could cross-section the wire like anywhere I want, since it's constant current, I could shut it off, you know, cut it, or if I had a counter, let's say, where I could count coulombs flowing through a cross-section, over a four-minute period, 1,200 uh, coulombs of charge would pass. So really all we're doing is we're looking at units. We have five coulombs per second. That's how many coulombs flowing per second. So we're multiplying that by the time that's elapsed. The only problem is the time that's elapsed is in minutes. So we're setting it up in a unit conversion here so that we're multiplying by the time that we have this conversion factor wedged in so that the units come out and are uh, you know, taken care of. If we didn't do this, then you could tell immediately from your unit conversion that these would not cancel at all and so you wouldn't actually get the answer that you were looking for. And the second part of the problem says how 